Hello YouTube. So as we all know, a couple days ago, the Spirit Jailbreak was released, and this jailbreaks all versions of firmware, including the iPad 3.2, and I jailbroke mine right away, you probably saw the video on it, and because it's such a new jailbreak, a lot of apps are not optimized for the iPad, and they either just plain don't work, or are kind of glitchy. So I went through and downloaded some of the most popular apps, and I tested them out just to see which ones worked, which ones didn't, and I'll be showing you all the ones that I tested. So I'm just going to go through each one and show you what it does, and if you haven't seen it before, you should go download it. And so let's get right into it. So one of the apps that's on everybody's top list is Winterboard, and this allows you to have themes for your iPhone or iPod Touch, or now the iPad. Now because you can now get the background on the iPad, the winterboard is not so relevant, but it can still change the icons. So this is what happens when you try to open it. It opens up, waits for a little while, and then crashes. So that's sort of a bummer. I was really hoping that winterboard would work, but it doesn't, so hopefully we'll be seeing more in an update. Next we have Categories. Categories opens up just fine, looks like an emulated iPhone app, and everything should work regularly. You can see I created a games folder here, and I have some of my games in it. You can run it just like a normal iPhone app, blow it up or make it smaller, and everything can launch from right here. So if we open up Plants vs. Zombies, we can just tap on it. And it will give you a black screen for a little bit, but other than that, it just starts right up. So that's pretty nice that that works. I always use categories. And next we have iFile, which is a file browser for the iPhone and iPod Touch. And it does run like an, like an emulated iPhone app, but it works. So you can get all the normal things that you could like, regularly. So you can go like your applications folder or whatnot. And so that works just fine. And then next we have Boss Prefs. Boss Prefs has add several things like respringing and other things into your into an app and here I'll zoom in so you can see we've got the option to respring, reboot, or power off these don't do anything right now as best I can tell reboot works but respring doesn't so you can see my iPod starting back up so respring will just highlight itself and then not do anything but reboot and power off both work. Alright, so one other thing to note, when you reboot with this jailbreak, I don't know why it does this, but when you reboot, you'll get this lock screen and your everything will look exactly like a big iPod Touch. You can see that we've got the normal iPod Touch dock, we've got 4x4 four four icons, the size of an iPod Touch icon, and the keyboard at the Spotlight Search is like a regular iPod. Now everything will still work, it'll type normally enough, but as you can tell, it's kind of annoying to have that happen. So all you've got to do is respring and it'll go back to normal. So this will bring us to our next item, which is SB settings. So I actually wasn't expecting SB settings to work, but I installed it, and you just swipe the status bar, like regular, and it'll pop up over in the corner. It doesn't look like they changed it for the iPad, but I still think this is really nice. I really don't think they need to, and everything works as norm like normal as far as I can tell. You just tap respring, and it'll respring. It is a little buggy, but all the things that you would like set on your status bar normally, like you can see I've got the date on the status bar as well as the free memory, so all that works like normal, and that's pretty nice. So that's SB settings. Next we have mobile terminal, and you can tell that when we open that up, it just quits out. So nothing exciting there. And then backgrounder. So this is one of the most popular apps for all of the jailbroken iPhones and iPod touches. Backgrounder allows you to run applications in the background. This app will open up normally, and if you open up a different app, like the App Store, let's say, and just wait for it to load, you can just hold down the Home button, and it'll background like normal. You don't get the badges on the corners, but other than that, 
it's completely more normal. You see we just jump right back to where we were and you can disable it just the same. So that's really nice that Backgrounder works. That's definitely one of the apps that I look for most on the iPhone and iPod touches. And so now let's move on. Dtunes is an app that allows you to download and operate music files and other things all within this app and it runs like an emulated iPhone app as you can see. And you can see I downloaded an MP3 of Linkin Park. The Safari download plugin works as well too, so that's nice. And everything works normally, you can play it. And I'm not going to have the volume on for obvious reasons, like copyright. But just so you know, it plays totally normally, so everything works there. Next we have IntelliScreen, which adds stuff like new emails, SMS messages, and other things, all to your home screen, your lock screen, when you start up your iPod. So this doesn't work at all. Like Before it even launches, it's quit and done. Like The apps don't even move off the screen. And it crashed my iPod when I tried to install it, so I do not recommend downloading this. But other than that, that's pretty much the most popular jailbreak applications. So if you have anything that you want me to test and you're worried it'll break your device, just leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll test it out for you. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching and please rate, comment, and subscribe.